This is a lecture from Open Tuition. For the free lecture notes that go with this podcast, please visit opentuition.com. Irrecoverable debts and allowances. Now, as always, the um, written bit in the chapter, you can have a read yourself. I'll have a read now or read after when I've been through it. Uh, but I'm going to use uh, examples to explain what we mean by irrecoverable debts and allowances first. And then when we sorted that out, um, after a pause, we'll then have another section when we'll go through the uh, necessary debits and credits. So first of all, to explain what's happening, can you look at example one? Now, we're not going to do any debits credits, but have a look at the question with me. And then let's sort out what we want to end up with. It says at the end of the first year of trading, there's a balance on the receivables account of Street of 62,500. So there's our receivables. If there was nothing else, of course, that would appear on the balance sheet as a current asset. However, on investigation, this amount is found to include two debts from A, PLC and B, PLC, which are to be regarded as irrecoverable. Now, an irrecoverable debt or you'll see it's sometimes referred to as a bad debt. Um, it's where, for whatever reason, um, we're certain we'll never get the money. Uh, maybe the person knowing us has gone bankrupt, leaving nothing at all. Maybe they've died, maybe they've completely disappeared. But for whatever reason, we're certain we're never going to get the money. And it says A and B are irrecoverable. The amounts owing, 2,500 and 1,600 respectively. And remember that they're included in the 62,500, the total we've got at the moment. Well, of course, if that 62,500 includes money we know we're never going to get, um, then it, we can't show it as owing on the balance sheet. Irrecoverable debts, we remove completely from receivables. Now, as I've said, we'll look at the debits credits later, but it does mean here uh, that we've got receivables at the moment of 62,500. It includes these two amounts, so let's remove them. Let's remove A, 2,500. Let's remove B, 1,600. And it leaves us with a balance on receivables of... at 58,400 and so they completely disappear uh, and if there was nothing else in the question then on the balance sheet we'd show current assets receivables 58,400 however let's carry on it also says though that in addition there's 2,800 owing from Z which is regarded as doubtful. Now what we mean by a doubtful debt a doubtful debt we're still hoping we'll get the money but for some reason we're unsure, we're uncertain we might not receive the money. So still hoping to receive the money But, we might not. Now, you could say that's the situation with any uh, amount owing, that you might not. But here, for a specific reason. Uh, for instance, maybe it's been owed for a long time. Normally, people perhaps pay us in one month. This has been owing for three months. We're still chasing them. 
Uh, but we've got to accept they might never pay. Uh, maybe another one with someone owes us money, we've been writing to them, their letters are returned undelivered, they've moved, they've changed address. Well, we've not given up, we're still hoping we can find the new address and get the money, but again, we might not. Now, here we're going to treat it slightly differently. On the one hand, we want to make sure on the balance sheet that we are prudent, we are safe. We only want to show when we're certain of getting money. But we don't want to actually remove these um, debts because the danger is if we remove them, <coughs> we'll end up forgetting all about them. And of course, if we don't continue to chase, then we certainly won't get the money. And so what we're going to do with uh, doubtful debts is slightly different. On the balance sheet, under the heading Current Assets, we'll show as receivables <coughs> the amount we're hoping to get. For this example, remember, it was 62,500, but two we know we're not going to get, and so we're still hoping to get 58,400. But, to be safe, if any of that uh, amount left is doubtful, then on the balance sheet we will deduct what we call an allowance for receivables Included in the 58.4 is 2,800 doubtful. And that leaves us what we think a certain uh, to be received, the difference of 55,600. So there's the actual asset on the balance sheet, 55,600. But we will show that little breakdown that although we think we're certain to get 55,600, we're actually hoping to get 58,4. We're deducting 2,8 just to be safe. For the last time, we, we hope we'll get it, but there's the risk we won't. So, no problem. However, there's one final thing here. The last line says, Street has a policy of maintaining a general allowance for receivables of 4%. And the point is this. After removing the bad debts, we're owed 58,400. And we've been through, and we've found out two, uh, sorry, one, Z, there's a problem with. Perhaps Z's been owing it for a long time. So fair enough, we've got our allowance. And the rest of them, there's no reason for us to be worried. Perhaps all the invoices have been sent fairly recently. Uh, and so, there's no reason to think of any one of them as being a specific problem. However, maybe in our business, on average, about 4% of people never pay. And we know that even that 55,600 left some of them aren't going to pay. The only thing is we don't know who. We knew Z was a problem. Forget him now. Everybody else, we know some of them won't pay, but we've no idea who it's going to be. And so what we say, to be absolutely safe, all right, deduct Z, we know he's a problem, but of whatever's left, just to be absolutely safe, we'll deduct another 4% because we're only going to be certain of the remaining 96%. And we'll deduct another allowance for receivables but this time it, instead of it being specific debts as it was before we'll take whatever percent we're told here, 4%, of those debts we think are OK. Here, 55,600. And 4% of 55,600 
is 2, 2, 2, 4. And if we deduct that, we end up with 53, 3, 7, 6. And there is our final figure for the balance sheet, the statement of financial position. There is the final figure for receivables. Now, a few things. First of all, we deducted 4% because the question said so. But there's no rule about that. It depends on the type of business. Some businesses have very, very few um, irrecoverable debts. Other businesses have a lot. So different businesses will deduct a different percent. And it depends on the economic climate. Um, if the economy is suffering at the moment, maybe there will be um, more people don't pay and you deduct a higher percent. Other years may be lower. So there's no rule there. In real life, it's whatever you think is sensible for your type of business. In the exam, you'll be told the percent, uh, and obviously you use it. And secondly, we've deduct this allowance for two different reasons. In the first case, it was because we knew one particular, one specific receivable was a problem, Z. And so that 2.8 is called a specific allowance. Whereas in the second case, the 2.2.2.4, it didn't relate to any particular person or company. It was just 4% because we know somebody on average won't pay. Well we call that a general allowance. And finally, although for this example the final figure on our balance sheet is 53376, for presentation, although we've deducted this allowance for two different reasons, specific and general, uh, for presentation purposes, we don't show the two separately, we just show one total. And so the final pretty presentation, again under the heading current assets, we show receivables. Whatever balance was on the account, less any that we know are irrecoverable. So having removed the irrecoverable ones, it was 58,400. To be safe, we then deduct our allowance for receivables. But as I just said, although we're doing it for two different reasons, on the balance sheet, we'll simply have one total. Um, it was 2,800, specific, 2224, general. The total of the two, 282224, is 5,024. Leaving a final figure, as before, of 53,376. There's the final value on the balance sheet, but there must be that analysis, that breakdown. How much are we trying to get 58.4? How much are we deducting as an allowance? Uh, again, some companies, instead of putting it actually on the front of the balance sheet to keep things neat, they just show the final figure and then have the analysis as a note with the accounts. Uh, no problem. The final figure, 53,376, the analysis has to be there somewhere, whether it's on the statement or whether it's as a note separately. That's the balance sheet. But of course, before we look at uh, debits credits, remember, in the actual accounts, it's 62,500. And what we've done for various reasons, which I'm not going to repeat, we took the 62,500, but we removed some, we took off the allowance, we've reduced it to 53,376. Well, I think clearly 
If you end up showing a lower amount, if you reduce the asset, there's an expense involved. And therefore, on the income statement, under the heading Expenses, we will show the cost of doing this. And we did two things. We had irrecoverable debts. We removed debts of 25 and 1600. So in total that came to 4100. It was an expense. Removing those, it cost us 4 1. Uh, in addition, though, we created this allowance for receivables. Strictly, and you'll see why later, uh, we call it increase in allowance for receivables. On the balance sheet, we deducted another 5024. Well, again, it's costing us 5024 to reduce the receivables figure. And so there's the cost of what we've done. Um, some people do show it as two separate items, as I have there. More commonly, we just have one total for the two of 9124. So it's really our choice. Uh, but more commonly and easier for the exam, the total cost in the income statement of the two different things we've been doing is 9124. All right, so there we are. Here's what we want to end up with in the balance sheet. Here's what we want, need to end up with on the income statement. But of course, it can't appear by itself since the... Um, income statement and the statement of financial position that come from the T accounts, we need to look at the debits credits necessary to end up with what we want. And we'll do that in the second session for this chapter.